Hi folks, uh, back at the hangar today. Today is November the 6th, Friday. But uh, so I've taken the day off work, and what we're out of, what we're doing today <coughs> is we're going to winterize the airplane and perform the annual inspection on it. some of my previous videos on uh, making louvers and cowl mods and flight testing louvers and cowl mods um, that would give you a good background if you haven't seen those you should go back and revisit those and that will help uh, in the discussion of what I'm going to go over today so let's uh, let's get started with that so on my previous videos I did all. I did a lot of talking about louvers and uh, cowl mods and stuff, but I never had the I never had the cowlings off the engine. So this this is my engine exposed with the uh, with the cowlings off, and it's pretty busy. Uh, there's a secondary. This is a heater core or secondary water radiator. This is a primary radiator down here. It gets its air at, right through the front. This is a first stage oil cooler. This is the second stage oil cooler. <clears throat> so engine engine oil comes out from here. This is a modified uh, outlet port. The original oil out for a, for a Mazda engine is back here in the from the front plate or front cover. It's at the back of the engine here because the engine is installed in reverse order in an airplane versus in a car. So. This is the original oil out from the engine, but I modified it to take oil from here. It goes into this oil cooler here, in at the bottom, out at the top. So that that is done on purpose so that any air that may be may be trapped in your heater cores after shutdown before startup will simply will get pushed up and out by the oil flow. So in at the bottom, out at the top, over to the second oil cooler. In at the bottom, out at the top, and if, and finally back into the engine here. And in there, in series with that, there's a there's an aluminum adapter that I made that has a has the oil uh, temperature sensor in there. So what we want to do here, we're critical. We're, what's critical here is to try to keep this oil return temperature back into the engine below 210 degrees. We're not so worried about what the temperature is in the pan. We're worried about the temperature that returns to the engine. And the reason for that is, upon return to the engine, that's where it immediately gets pumped into the e-shaft and into the rotor housings um, in order to keep the uh, the rotors cool. That's the only way the combustion air uh, and how the, uh, how the rotors themselves and the seals, oil seals, are cooled is by the oil coming back in. So that's what those hoses are, and now what you can see here, this is a, this is this is a, a secondary water radiator or heater core. So it's it's hooked into the the normal uh, water jacket outlet for a heater core that would be inside the, the car. But I needed extra, I needed some extra water jacket cooling, so I've hooked it up this way. So again, in at the bottom, out of the top. And then it feeds around in and goes into the suction side of the uh, of the water pump on this side of the engine. So on this side of the engine, you can see this is this is the outlet uh, to the uh, of the water jacket system. This thing is modified. You can see it's been welded. And this is a an adapter that I made. I stuck on here. This hose is to return air. This is the highest point in the system. So this returns, mixes air and water, it's mostly to get air out of the system and goes into the bottom of this catch can and fill point, secondary fill point. And this is the the only, um, this is a pressure cap for my system. I typically keep this about half full, a little less than half, two and a half inches of 50-50 coolant, black hole and water. Um, so that is, there's a, a lot of that going on. So there, there's an air. This, this is again is 
intended to get air out of the out of the block. So that takes air out of the block, and there's another point where I take air out of the block. So this is the highest point in the block. So you pick up trying to get air out of there, feed it back into this catch can, air out of here, back into this catch can, and there's one more. The top of the radiator, the highest point in the radiator. So the radiator, the water is being pushed up the radiator and back down and sucked into the engine. So if there's any air getting trapped in there, we want to bleed it out here. So that comes back in and goes into here and can come up into this catch can. And it, because it has a pressure cap, as this pressure builds, there's a, the, the, the cap will relieve it and let air and or glycol overflow out the other side and into this catch bottle. So that's the way the coolant system works. So what, I, what the problems I've had is trying, trying to get both the oil and the water temperatures to be within an acceptable range. And when I first got this airplane hooked up, I got one of these oil coolers hooked it up. It wasn't enough. So I got, I got a second one. And when I hooked the second one up, it's almost too much. It's kind of overkill. So I've always had pretty good cool, but I've had a heck of a time getting the water jacket temperature under control. Um, and the only, the main reason I can think of is that I just simply don't have, uh, I don't have the, I just not, don't have the air speed in my favor. 80 mile an hour climb out speed and cruising at 100 miles an hour is just not the same as climbing at 100 and cruising at 150. Um, Having said that, what I did to improve it was adding this secondary heater core here and putting in this large straight shot air duct which would normally connect to this point. So for winterizing, what I'm doing is the opposite of everything I did in the summer. I've, I, I increased the air inlet uh, into this secondary cooler, gave it a nice straight shot, and the original hole I had here was only about two and a half inches, so this is about ten square inches or more. That picked me up an additional ten degrees of cooling on my water jacket. So what I do, what I do in the winter time, I spend all summer trying to get, make this engine run cool enough, and I spend all winter trying to get it to run warm enough. So adding extra air in here, I completely block that off. And what I do is this air inlet, which would normally connect into this point in the cowling, is converted into a hot air inlet so that I can have a little extra cabin heat. So this, this I just scavenge hot air off of here and I take it in and that's how I get cabin heat in the wintertime. So I pick up hot air already coming off this oil cooler, feeds hot air and hot air into here, moves through here, and I get even hotter air, additional hot air from, from, the, uh, from the heater core at this point, and that gives me my cabin heat. So that explains what that tube is. Uh, what this small tube does here is it picks up a little bit of air coming in here, and it's a blast tube. It blasts air onto my um, electronic ignition coils two of them here and there's two of them here. So the air initially comes in here and what's left over from that will flow back over top of these and then down out uh, and out of the engine. Or so I hope. Uh, there's another blast tube in here and that's this one. So it, uh, this is the uh, throttle body or, or air intake for my engine. So I just have a little port there and I scavenge uh, about a one inch diameter tube goes over top of the throttle body and that air will pass down, pass over that and my alternator. So I'm trying to keep my alternator cool. Again, this is more of a summer summer operations thing, but uh, we want to keep that cool and I've got a temperature probe on there and I check that out and I keep an eye on what that temperature is. So that, that pretty much explains the engine. Um, and what I'm trying to do with it. So a couple of things I'm doing here to to, uh, to winterize this thing. I spend all summer trying to get this engine to run cool enough, and in the winter time I spend all it's all I, my time worrying about getting it to run warm enough. So I had added, uh, I had created 
made these louvers that you would have seen in a previous video. I made a set of, made a set of louvers, one to go on each side, to try to get uh, try to get extra cooling. And what I was doing there was originally I had all of this blocked off with aluminum. I've left a little bit here as an additional heat shield for the exhaust. Um, but I thought that if I added louvers in this area, I would get some cooling airflow out of this radiator. It would be assisted by coming up and going out here. And it would and it would also take some of the hot air from my exhaust and go immediately out the side. And would have more air. So there's a lot of air coming from here going over the exhaust to begin with. But I would get even more. And I would get a lot of the hot air from this exhaust out the side. And I, and I definitely accomplished that. It, those those cooling louvers made quite a difference, um, but as you can see, I got this gaping hole here now, one on each side. So what I'm going to do is throw the louvers away for the, just for the winter and put these plates on and run with them closed because my my goal for the winter time is try to get the temperatures up on the engine. Like I flew the other day and it was I don't know it was five degrees Celsius. About 10, you know, about 42 or 43 degrees Fahrenheit. My oil temperature was about 110 or 120 degrees, and my water temperature never got above 150. And I don't mind those temperatures on takeoff, but I don't like those temperatures in cruise or when I'm descending. I like to, I like to be able to try to keep the temperature up. So one of the things I've done is is I put this little flapper valve in here in. Uh, in the air inlet to the engine. So when your air speed's low, with this weighted bolt on here, this thing will hang down. And anyway, so what I've done is I put in this I put in this restrictor. So when you're when you're not moving at all, it's it blocks this off. At air speed you're gonna get some air in there. Um, but you it's definitely restricting the air over the uh, over the radiator, which will help me get my helps get the, get the temperature up. I used it last winter, and it, it worked pretty good. Going back over the engine, this is the outlet, and normally there would be a thermostat in here, but I don't have a thermostat. I don't have a thermostat. I don't want a thermostat, and the reason I don't want them is because I don't trust them. <clears throat> in in the past, I've had them stick open, and I've had them stick closed. <laughs> I'm operating with it stuck open because I don't have one. But if I had one in there and it's stuck closed in an airplane, that's a real, real bad situation. So there's that reason. And the other reason is it's a lot better for aircraft purposes to have the whole engine and the, the whole engine, heater core systems and everything, all the water in the engine. As soon as this engine starts, fluid is pumping through the engine block, down through the radiator, back into the radiator, through the heater core, etc. It's all flowing. And it all warms up evenly. The engine block warms up evenly. All your heater cores warm up evenly, and it's a better situation. And the other, the other reason is, with a radiator, or I mean, with a with a thermostat, your engine heats up on the ground. And what that means is that at takeoff, your engine block is at operating temperature, but your Radiators and a lot of the, a lot of the cool in the system is not quite up to temperature, um, and what's what should be known about these engines and being this is a Mazda 13B is that the engine actually makes more horsepower when the engine is cold, and the reason for that is if you look at this um, rotor housing that I have here, it's an old rotor housing, and this is a rotor, is what it looks like. So the, the rotor fits in there, inside, inside the trochoid, they call it. And as the, when, as the e-shaft rotates, this thing goes around this way. Hard for me to do. But so if you look at this, you can see that you've got a fairly large combustion chamber here. And relatively thin walls. So this is this is the wall of the combustion chamber. These are the water jacket. This water flows through here all the time when the engine's uh, normal. So you can see right through those. So 
compared to the size of the combustion chamber and the, and the thickness of these walls, is what's happening is you don't want a thermostat because on takeoff, your engine's already at 180 degrees. And what happens is these things actually expand. And as they expand, you're actually losing a little bit of horsepower. So what I'd rather have is I'd rather take off with my engine at 130 or 140 degrees and then warm up slowly as I open the throttle, get air going. I get air going through the radiator cores and keeping the engine cool on takeoff. It's going, yes, the temperature is going to go up, but it's not, you're not starting at an already reduced power situation. You're starting off with the best power you can get on your first flight of the day. And that's why I, one of the other reasons why I don't want a thermostat, especially in the summertime. So when you try to mod, you know, you try to optimize this machine for 30 or 30, 30 to 32 degrees Celsius or low 90s Fahrenheit, um, it runs pretty cold in the wintertime. Anywhere below 15 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit, this this engine runs really runs too cold. So I got I got to get I got to get positive control on it. So what I'm going to try to do, uh, take that, take this hose out, don't need it. What I want is a damper. I want to put a damper in here that I can have positive control on from the cockpit. So I'll have a, a mount a bracket on here. I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to keep this as a, as a passive uh, control for now. I'll make another piece. This one's actually slightly too big for in there, and I'll make a slightly smaller one. We'll put a we'll put a control arm on here, and we'll bring the, uh, the vernier up through this hole that's already there. And I think I'm hoping I don't need that water spray anymore anyway. And if I need it, well, I can always put it back in somewhere else. Uh, I think I explained the engine and the, and its water system and its oil system better now that the with the cowling's off, and we have to have a look at what the engine is the way it's set up. So here is the airplane. Uh, with the cowlings back on and what I'm calling the winter kit. So I've got a, I've got the flat piece on this side. I've plugged up this auxiliary air intake for the for the secondary uh, water cooler completely. I've got a I've got a a grill on my primary oil cooler, and today I've left the secondary oil cooler open. But when it's really cold out, I have another grill for this side to control my oil temperature. And you can see I've added the little the little flapper valve down here. It moves back as I move forward. It's not perfect, but it's better than, uh, like I said before, it's better than nothing. And something else I did was I put the flat stock on here, and then I had this grill left over, the, or this low-profile louver left over from the other side and I decided to put it on. I actually I like the look. It makes you focus makes you focus in the center. And you see the grill and you kind of ignore the flat piece. So I like the look. I haven't done it uh, to this side yet, but I have another small grill and I'm gonna put it on there. I don't really need it. I'm just putting it on because I like the look and I don't think that they're aggressive enough they're gonna make a big difference. So anyway I'm about to go flying. Enough talking. Let's get this bird in the air.